Hello. Hello. And welcome to our IVF webinar. It's great to be here once again. And we have another interesting, intriguing topic as well. And I'm very eager to listen to what uh, Andrea has prepared for us. As you can see, our special guest is right here. Andrea, Andrea Yearsley is right here with us. And I'm very happy that you decided to join us tonight and you will talk about hypnotherapy. Uh, this is definitely a topic we've never done before. And I'm very, very excited that we will talk about this tonight. And uh, welcome to our IVF webinar. How are you feeling tonight, Andrea? I'm feeling great, thank you. We've just I've just come back from a few days away, so that's really, really nice. And it's great to get an opportunity to explain to people about how um, hypnotherapy can actually support them uh, in their fertility issues and with their IVF journey. Exactly. We are definitely here to listen to it. We are definitely eager to find out a bit more on it uh, because uh, I don't think that everyone understands this. We talked about this before even starting the webinar that uh, I think many, many people are still not really sure how it works uh, they've seen this the movies etc and sometimes i think this is the whole idea how it works but uh, tonight you will definitely um, you will be able to explain exactly how it works i'm really excited to to have you here and just let me tell you that um, andrea she is the uh, founder of pebble fertility but she is also um, a fertility coach. She's the uh, hypnotherapist, so she has experience and she will be happy to share her experience uh, with all of you. And also we will start, of course, with her presentation on our hypnotherapy topic tonight. But afterwards, remember, it will be time for your questions. All you need to do is just type the questions in the chat section and Andrea will answer them for you uh, right after the um, presentation. Okay, that will be it for me. And Andrea, ready to start with our today's topic? Fantastic. Okay, so um, I'm Andrea um, Yearsley, and I'm the founder of Pebble Fertility. And I founded Pebble Fertility because I actually had my own IVF struggles, my own fertility journey. I was trying for a uh, baby for eight years. I had numerous IUIs and IVFs. I was actually 38 when I started trying for a baby. And at the time I had a very busy, stressful career as a television producer. And I noticed that I didn't really get much support to deal with the stress of going through IVF because obviously it, it is very, very stressful. I did have some hypnotherapy. Somebody suggested to me that I had classic hypnotherapy to help me deal with the stress. And it made a massive difference. It really helped me move forward and feel far more relaxed about the whole situation. So after I had my first child, I retrained, I left television and I retrained as a therapist specializing in fertility. And I absolutely love it. I've seen loads and loads of women and many of them have gone on to have healthy, happy babies. So. I can't see the slides at the moment. That's it, lovely, thank you very much. So I'm just gonna give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. So firstly, um, what is hypnosis? We're gonna have a look at what hypnosis is. We're gonna have a look at the difference between hypnosis, classical hypnotherapy and RTT, which is the type of hypnosis that I do. We're gonna have a look at some scientific studies that support the use of hypnosis for fertility talk about hypnosis and stress, hypnosis and beliefs, and actually hypnosis and physical changes to the body. And then I'm gonna talk through some client stories to give you an idea of some of the issues that come up and how they can be helped. And then we'll move on to a Q&A. So if you do have any questions, please write them down and I'll be happy to answer them. So, First thing, what is hypnosis? Now, most people, when they think about hypnosis, they think about stage hypnosis, that they'll be left clacking like a chicken or have absolutely no control. So actually, hypnotherapy is very different because hypnosis is not actually a different state. People often imagine that they're going to feel different like they might if they'd been drinking alcohol. Um, but hypnosis is just a different brain frequency 
and it is a completely natural state. It's actually very, very relaxed, and it's something that you will have been in many times, even though you're completely unaware of it. When you're in hypnosis, you are absolutely in control. You can hear things outside the room, inside the room. You can talk. A good example of the way hypnosis feels is if you've ever driven a car and maybe um, you've gone on a long journey and along a road that you know very, very well, and maybe when you've arrived, you've kind of thought, oh, I don't really remember driving down that road. That is the state that is exactly the same as hypnosis. It's when you've zoned out or maybe somebody's been talking to you and it wasn't that interesting and you kind of like zoned out and they suddenly go, hello, you there? It's that state. You are awake, you can talk, but you're just in, just slightly different from when you're normal consciousness. So I'm gonna show you some slides about the brain waves because this is where you can see where hypnosis kicks in. So the brain has different frequency of waves. Now the gamma brain wave, brain wave, which is the fastest, that's associated with heightened perception and uh, peak men mental state. So that's the kind of the in the zone brain wave. Then we move on to the beta brain wave. Now that's normal waking consciousness and the reasoning brain wave. So that's when you're alert and concentrated, you've got access to logic, reasoning and critical thinking. And then a bit slower is the alpha wave, which is the relaxation wave. So when you're in alpha brain wave, there's reduced anxiety, expanded mental clarity. It's a great environment for new learning and also for accessing previously learned information, which is really important. And it's the link between the conscious and the subconscious mind. And you're very suggestible when you're in the alpha brain wave state. And then there's theta, which is a bit slower still. And this is the state associated with light meditation and actually light sleep. It's when you're in the um, REM sleep, the rapid eye movement, the dream state. And the slowest brain wave is the delta state, and that is actually deep, deep sleep. Now, the border between alpha and theta, that border is the optimal state for hypnosis. So the body is relaxed, but is not asleep. The mind is open and highly suggestible. You're able to access the subconscious mind. You're able to access previously stored information, which is really important. Now, children up until kind of round about the age of seven are in this state all the time. And that's why they pretty much accept anything they're told. So information that is presented to the mind before the age of about seven, eight, nine, goes straight onto the subconscious at completely unchallenged. And you're actually unlikely to remember events that have created beliefs at this age, beliefs that could be causing an issue with fertility. Now, at around the age seven, the critical faculty develops and we start to question information coming in. And that's why kids stop leaving in unicorns, fairies and Father Christmas. They start to question what they're told. And it's important to know that because that's when things start to change. Now, there are several different types of hypnotherapy and I want to explain the difference between hypnosis, classical hypnotherapy and RTT hypnotherapy, which is what I do. So basically hypnosis is simply a method for getting the brain into the alpha theta state. OK, in order to access hidden areas of the brain. And these areas are not accessible by the conscious mind. It's a, it's a bit like a computer. The operating system, the operating files, you can't just get to them from the desktop. They're kind of hidden away. You have to go a special route to get to them. And that's to make sure that they're not inadvertently accessed. The subconscious mind is like that. You can't just get to it via the conscious mind. Now, 
in the state of hypnosis, you can access the subconscious. So classical hypnotherapy, what is that? That's about taking a client into the state of hypnosis and then basically giving them positive suggestions to help them move forward. Generally speaking, that's what classical hypnotherapy is. RTT hypnotherapy is a little bit different because what you do in RTT is you take the client into hypnosis, then discover what the subconscious blocks that are causing the issue are, deal with them by reframing them, and then layer new positive beliefs onto the subconscious. And then finally, give a recording that's played every day in order to embed the new positive beliefs. So a good analogy for this would be if you wanted to plant some seeds and you had a flower bed and it was full of weeds and you threw the seeds down over the weeds, there's not great chance that the seeds are going to take. So the weeds represent here the negative beliefs, the subconscious blocks, and the seeds represent the positive beliefs. So if you throw them down over something covered with weeds, they haven't got a great chance of taking. If you cut the weeds down and threw the seeds over the ground then, they've got a bit more chance of taking, but even so, the weeds have got strong roots will come back thick and fast. So it's probably not going to work that well. It might work temporarily, but for longevity, it's not the greatest answer. But if you dug up the border and you dug out all the roots and you threw them away and you went through the soil to make sure that there weren't any roots left, then you planted the seeds. Then the seeds have got a really good chance of growing, especially if you look after them properly by watering and making sure they've got sun. That's the effect the same effect as listening to the recording every single day. That's giving the seeds what they need in order to grow, giving the beliefs what they need in order to grow. So how are subconscious beliefs created? Well, they can be created at any time in life, but they're often created during childhood before this critical faculty has actually dropped in. They can be created by very emotionally charged events, something that really embeds itself on the subconscious mind. And they can also be created by feelings or thoughts that are repeated many, many times. So, for example, you can imagine a teenager saying, I mustn't get pregnant. I can't get pregnant. It'd be a disaster. It'd be a disaster. I really mustn't get pregnant. That could embed itself on the mind, on the subconscious mind. And it's a bit like installing a program on a computer. So you might have installed a program, for example, in 2000. And at the time, it made complete sense. It worked on the hardware that you had. It was right for what you were doing at the time with the computer. But now you don't want it anymore. It doesn't work and it doesn't make sense. But it's sitting there like a virus, kind of running in the background, causing issues. That's like subconscious blocks. Most of the time, clients do not know they're there, but they're sitting in the background, they're creating issues. At the time, those beliefs may have made perfect sense. Now they don't. So a few examples of beliefs that clients have come up with um, during sessions that have caused issues for them have been the fear that they might not be a good mum, the worry that having a baby could affect their career, money worries. Do they have enough money to support a child? Issues they've had with previous partners. So if they've been in a relationship that really wasn't a good relationship and they've kept telling themselves, I can't get pregnant, I really shouldn't get pregnant in this relationship. At the time that made sense, they then find the right partner, but that belief is deeply embedded in their mind and it's causing problems. Very common one is fear of birth. So sometimes children are told horrific stories about um, their own birth, or they might have seen something dramatic on a television screen or on a film or something that was completely exaggerated, and it sunk into the subconscious. And they may not even remember of see, seeing that scene, but it is there in the subconscious. Fear of getting pregnant, for whatever reason, and also guilt. So sometimes 
people have got pregnant earlier on and they and they decided not to carry through with the pregnancy they have a great guilt and that stops them from getting pregnant again so now you've got an idea of some of the issues that come up and also the impact that subconscious blocks have so let's talk about the other thing that hypnosis can help with and that is stress so stress and fertility so there'll be many different um, studies into hypnosis and fertility and they know that stress causes issues relaxation improves ivf conception rates there's been many studies done on it it absolutely does we all know infertility is really really stressful ivf is even more stressful the process, the cost, the physical effect of the hormones on the body, time off work, people constantly asking questions. It's stressful. And when your body is stressed, it produces cortisol. Now, cortisol is the body's response to danger. And worry is the 21st century, 22nd century, I always forget which one we're in. It's the equivalent now to danger. Okay. Our brains have not changed much in 30,000 years. They really haven't. 30,000 years ago, danger would be something like a saber-toothed tiger coming after you. Cortisol allowed the body to respond with a quick burst of energy, and it prioritized the immediate survival function, so the muscles operate at maximum potential. But cortisol also stops anything that is not essential for immediate survival. So for example, fertility is not essential for immediate survival. I mean, not when you're being chased by a tiger, it's not. And also body repair is not essential for immediate survival, not in that situation. And those are turned off when the body is flooded with cortisol. We all know that animals in zoos have real problems having babies. They are given all the correct food and nutrients better than they would get in the wild. They're actually in less danger than they are in the wild, but they are stressed because they're in captivity and stress stops them from getting pregnant. And humans are no different. So by going into the alpha theta brainwave state during hypnosis, you're actually signaling to the body that everything is safe. So cortisol is reduced, the body can repair itself, and it is more ready to support a pregnancy. And regularly going into a state of hypnosis is really, really good for the body. So I want to show you a few studies that support the use of hypnosis during fertility treatment. So if you want to know any more about these studies, you can go to my website, scroll down to the bottom of the science page, and you'll find the links to the original study. So the British Medical Journal published a study where women who had difficulty conceiving were taught how to replace negative beliefs with positive ones. So out of the women that were taught how to replace the negative beliefs, 50% of them became pregnant. The control group who were not taught this, only 20% of them became pregnant. Now you can see that's a massive difference. And then there was a study in Israel, and out of 185 women who were hypnotized for IVF treatment, 28% of them became pregnant. In the control group, where they were not hypnotized for IVF, only 14% became pregnant. And the Journal of Fertility and Sterility, they published a um, study where infertile women who were using mind-body techniques such as hypnosis had a conception rate of around 42 to 55%, as opposed to the women who were only using IVF, and their conception rate was 20%. Now, we also know that anxiety impacts egg production and quality. So there was a study where they looked at women who were undergoing IVF and who were very worried about the medical aspect of the treatment. And they had 20% fewer eggs retrieved 
and 90% fewer eggs fertilized. So again, a big difference. Um, the mind is, you know, when the mind is worried and the stress, it really, really affects the body. And in another study, they looked at how attitudes, moods, and behaviors actually affect hormone production. And they show that the mind can cause definable reproductive disorders. So sometimes when people are told, you know, you need to look at your mindset, they think, oh, it, it, it's, it's all in the head. It, it's not a real issue. No, the mind is so, so powerful. It can absolutely affect the body. The subconscious mind runs the body. It controls the heart beating. It controls hormone production. It controls the blood pressure. It controls everything in the body. And that is why mindset work is so, so crucial when it comes to dealing with fertility. So creating new beliefs with hypnosis. And this can really move clients forward because the mind moves you towards whatever you focus on. And believing that you may not get pregnant creates anxiety and stress. Now, often clients will say to me, oh, but I'm really focused on having a baby. That's all I think about. But when I kind of like dig deeper and ask them questions, it's clear that actually, yes, they really want a baby, but what they're actually focusing on is the fear of it not working. So what they're really focusing on is not getting pregnant. There is a very interesting rule of the mind. The mind responds to the words and pictures that we create. And also, the mind cannot tell the difference between truth and fiction. And that means if you implant positive beliefs and attitudes into the mind and you do it enough, the mind will actually believe it. And when the mind believes it, the subconscious mind believes it, it creates what's called cognitive dissonance. So that is the subconscious mind has one belief. Yes, I'm going to be a mum. But it kind of knows, because it knows that you're not pregnant, that it's not quite aligned. And this causes a tension. And what happens is the subconscious mind does everything it can to make it happen. So, and it can actually affect how the body works. So it's really, really important to work and focus on creating positive beliefs that it will happen, that you are going to be a mom, that you are going to be a dad that you're moving towards what you want and focus on that. That's absolutely crucial because I can absolutely see with the clients, the clients are absolutely prepared to let go of that fear, which is, believe me, completely natural. The fear of, well, if I really believe it's going to happen and then it doesn't, I'm going to be completely gutted. So I'll just keep a bit of it that says, well, it may not happen. And that's understandable and natural, but that's not actually helpful. What you need to do is 100% focus on the belief that it is absolutely happening for you. Focus on that, on seeing, imagining, creating in your mind uh, your house full of baby stuff. Going your car with a baby seat in it if you've got a car. Buying some baby stuff, doing everything that you would do when you're expecting a baby, looking at prams, looking at baby clothes, all that kind of stuff is really, really important. And I know that some people kind of, this, um, they, they worry that if they do that, it's bad luck. But actually, it's really important to focus really positively on what you want. So now I'd just like to run through a few client cases to give you an idea of some of how some of um, the issues that clients have come up with have affected them. So, for example, I had a client who shall obviously all my clients remain nameless. Um, she was very religious, uh, very, very strong Christian. And she'd been trying to get pregnant with her husband for several years. And she kept miscarrying at about six weeks. Every time she get pregnant, she'd miscarry six weeks. And the doctors didn't know what was wrong. So when I took her into hypnosis and we went back to scenes to find out what was holding her back, from having a baby. She went back to a scene two weeks before she got married, where her husband revealed to her that when he was younger, he'd used pornography. 
Now, she's a very religious lady. And she had this belief that she wasn't actually aware of that maybe her husband would not be a good father because he'd done something that she really disagreed with. But when we kind of looked at it under hypnosis and we reframed it and we discussed the fact that actually she'd not discovered him using pornography, he'd revealed it to her because he wanted her to know everything about him before they got married. And it was a long time in the past. So actually that made him honest um, rather than being a negative thing. When we reframed it, funnily enough, six weeks later, that was around that, that was it. She got pregnant actually naturally then, six weeks later. So I got a message from her three months later to say, I'm expecting. And she had healthy baby girl, absolutely perfect, no issues, perfect pregnancy. And then uh, there was a lady I worked with who was in her early 40s. And she'd been trying for quite a while with no success. And when we went back to her scenes, she came from a very large family. And her mother had had children very, very young. She'd been about 18 when she had the first. It was a very big family. I think there were seven children. And my client growing up saw her mother very resentful at being a mum because she'd been a child herself, basically, when she got pregnant. And they had no money, so it was very hard. She had to work really, really hard. And my client had developed this belief that being a parent was drudgery. She wasn't aware of this consciously, but deep down there was a part of her that thought that it was drudgery and hard work. But when we talked about it under hypnosis, and we reframed it. The fact she was a very successful businesswoman. She wasn't her mother. She'd done all sorts of exciting things and done all the things that she wanted to do. And if she wanted to have help around the house, then she could afford it. As soon as she reframed that belief, again, she got pregnant. Not a problem. And then another client I had, she had one child and she was a doctor. And her mother had said to her, oh, I don't think you'll cope um, with your career and another child. You better just stick to the one. And she'd been trying for three years, trying, trying, could not get pregnant went into hypnosis, she went back to this scene where her mother had said to her, you're not gonna manage with two children. We talked about it, we reframed it, that actually, you know, the support, there's many different ways to parent, that she could get help. We reframed it, and again, about five months later, pregnant, healthy boy. What had been holding her back was the belief that she couldn't actually have her career and cope with two children. So you can see how these negative beliefs can actually cause massive issues. And they're things that my clients weren't even aware of. And they were quite surprised when they came up. They were really unaware that they had these beliefs. So that's basically how hypnotherapy can help with fertility. So it can help with stress, relieving the stress. It can help with removing subconscious blocks, finding out what the subconscious blocks are and removing them and also implanting really positive beliefs. So the three core areas and it makes a massive, massive difference, which is why I love working with my clients because it's just brilliant when you can see the change, when you know that, they've, that they're pregnant and they're having a healthy baby. So if you'd like any support, you can. I've got a Facebook group that you can join, which is free. Um, and you can post if you want any support. I do lives on various subjects. Um, I kind of keep people in the loop with new research and I see stuff coming up. I'm soon going to be launching a membership site, Pebble Sanctuary, where there will be Q&A sessions regularly. There'll be masterclasses. There'll be guest speakers, um, hypnosis recordings to help all the way through treatment and natural fertility. Um, and actually the membership site is designed to help people from fertility issues right through to parenting. Because often when people have had issues, I found with um, fertility, they actually do need support through the pregnancy and beyond because they've got all those fears because it's been so difficult to get pregnant in the first place. When they are pregnant, they kind of like have lots of worries and fears and they need a lot of support and hand holding. 
So if you would like support, just reach out. And if you've got any answers, uh, sorry, any questions, um, I'd love to answer them. Thank you so much, Andrea. Definitely, that was interesting. Thank you for explaining. Thank you for your uh, providing also case uh, studies here as well. Definitely, it's interesting that you you know provided that because that means it works on the real patients, and uh, it definitely sounds uh, amazing. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, now time for the questions, but of course, I just also want to mention that remember that you can ask anything that's on your mind right here. Uh, but as Andrea mentioned, if you wish, there are other options. You can uh, get in touch with her directly. You can get uh, to the um, the group, Facebook group, as you can see, and there are plenty of ways for you to, to reach out and see uh, if it's something also for you, maybe, right? Um, thank you so much. Definitely interesting. Glad that we are uh, discussing this tonight. And of course, as you can see, some questions are coming in here, actually. Uh, the first one is from Derek. Okay, personal question for you. Uh, let me just show you this. So what was your personal diagnosis in ART? Uh, for me, for my fertility? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I was probably too old. Um, now, bear in mind, um, I had classic hypnosis. So I didn't have RTT, which looks at um, limiting beliefs. And I know perfectly well now that I had a very, very strong limiting belief, which I honestly believe that if I'd had RTT, at the start of my journey, that things would be different. I wouldn't change the way my story worked out. I ended up having donor eggs. I wouldn't change that for the world because I have two beautiful children who I adore and I wouldn't swap for anything. For me, the classic hypnotherapy that I had relaxed me and actually allowed me to see that there was a different route, which was the donor egg route. And I'm not convinced that without it, that I would have gone down that route. But for me, I mean, basically the doctor said, your hormone levels are really, really low. They're just not, you know, you're not responding to treatment. The egg quality is not good. So I guess by the time I actually went into donor eggs, it was that the eggs were just not really viable. But I, you know, I wonder if I'd had RTT when I was 38, when I started, I think things would have been different, but who knows? All right. Thank you for sharing, of course. Thank you, Derek, for your question. And that's uh, thank you for inspiring because it's always the case. Yes, whenever uh, we have someone here and whenever you someone is sharing their own stories, definitely it's inspiring for all the patients. So thank you for, for that, for sure. As you can see, there is a thank you from Derek as well. Um, okay. Uh, and also, Derek has added so during your presentation when you were explaining. Uh, definitely, it's something that uh, stays. Um, so great explanation on stress to IVF outcomes. So thanks a lot for that. Thanks for the comment, You're welcome. Derek. Um, let's have a look. So does hypnotherapy work on everyone? So everybody can be hypnotized. Okay, but it's actually a choice. Like if you didn't want to be hypnotized, I couldn't hypnotize you. It's a choice. Some people are more suggestible than others. So it works better on some people, but everybody can be hypnotized. It is possible to hypnotize absolutely everybody. That said, hypnotherapy will support and help everybody, but it doesn't mean that hypnotherapy will allow everybody to get pregnant depending on what is going on with their body. Okay, so it absolutely help with stress. I've not had one client who has not felt different and just said, oh, do you know, I just feel so much easier. Or their husband has said, like, you're like a completely different person this round. You're really chilled. So, yes, it absolutely will work. Whether or not there is a subconscious block that is the reason that somebody isn't getting pregnant, it is not always a subconscious block. Sometimes there are things that are going on um, physically, as with me, the age of the eggs. Um, but yes, absolutely, everybody can be hypnotized. 
Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for the question. And I actually have an additional question. So let's say you have someone who wants to start. So how many sessions would you would recommend to start with? Well, I, I do RTT, which is what I, I like to describe that as hypnotherapy on steroids. Okay. So generally for RTT, it's between one to three sessions. I would say 90% of my clients have one session and the other 10% have two sessions. I've never mm -hmm. had a fertility client that's had three sessions. Okay. Uh, classic hypnotherapy is very different. Um, it would be a lot more sessions because it's working in a different way. It's just giving the positive suggestions. Mm -hmm. So I would say between one or two sessions. But that said, if somebody came to me and said, I'm starting, I, I'm starting IVF this week, mm -hmm. I would tell them not to have a session with me um, okay. because I would ask them to come back if the IVF didn't work because you do need to allow time for it to take effect. Ideally, I would say three months, minimum of three months. Okay. okay. So That's if it comes six weeks before, I would just say to them, I don't want you to waste your money. Mm -hmm. So have the, you know, because it does take a, a time to embed the beliefs. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Definitely, thank you for answering that. Uh, my additional question. And one more thing: How long does this kind of session would take, approximately? Well, I normally allow three hours for the session. Now, the session doesn't actually take three hours under hypnosis. <laughs> However, I do like to deal with whatever comes up, mm -hmm. and you can't always tell what's going to come up. And also, I like to have time to talk to the client after the session. Yeah. Okay. Give them whatever time they need to discuss things. So I book out three three hours. Normally the session takes about an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, depending on how complicated it is. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the question about how many sessions you need, because issues can be like onions. So you might peel off the one layer, and then something else might be underneath as well. And that's when generally you would need two sessions but that would be chatting to the client after about three weeks of listening to the recording, checking in with them, saying how are things going, how are you feeling, what's shifted, and then finding out at about three weeks, making a decision as to whether or not I might say, well, listen to the recording for a few more weeks and then we'll talk. Mm -hmm. um, or I might say, no, I think that, you know, I know what's come up in the session. I have a very good instinct for when somebody is going to need another session. I might say, well, my recommendation would be that you have a second session. But that's from experience, really. Excellent. Thank you so much. And actually, another question about uh, online session. Are they possible? Yes. I only, pretty much, I only do online. Okay. Um, and that's not just because of COVID. Um, I like doing on, online sessions because clients are more relaxed, generally, in their own home. I don't like clients driving after immediately after they've had a session. And sometimes it's difficult for me to say to a client, well, you need to sit outside for half an hour. So, you know, when they're in their own home, they feel more relaxed. And I just think it's um, it works really, really well. And also I, I work with clients all over the world. So they can't often come to see me. That said, I've had a couple of clients who've just said to me, we, who live in my um, area, I'm in Wales, who've said, you know, I'm completely Zoomed out. I just can't deal with another Zoom session. And I do have a clinic that I will take them to if necessary. But I personally, I prefer the online sessions. And there is no difference in how effective it is, whether it's online or in person. It makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. Okay, I just answered the question that I wanted to ask if it's just as effective. So thanks a lot for confirming yeah. that. It's absolutely to be honest, amazing. If it wasn't, if it wasn't as effective, I wouldn't be doing online sessions. Yeah. And of course, that makes perfect sense. But definitely, that's interesting. Thank you so much. And of course, there's a brilliant thank you from Versed, as you can see. Okay, uh, next question, definitely interesting one. Let's have a look, okay? I have had hypnotherapy before and I did want to be hypnotized, but it didn't work on me. Have you worked with people who are not easy to be hypnotized? And do you have techniques to help hypnotize harder to hypnotize people? 
Yeah, absolutely. Because some people have um, quite analytical minds. So there are different different methods of taking somebody into hypnosis. So if um, I normally do some tests when I first talk to somebody and at the start of the session to kind of like see how suggestible they are. So there are some people who are clearly very, very suggestible. Um, but actually, as I'm taking clients into hypnosis, I'm watching um, and I'm doing, I'm testing all along to see uh, how they're doing. And if I felt that somebody wasn't at the right state, then there are other resources I would pull in. However, what's really interesting is that people sometimes feel that they think that they need to be in a really deep state of hypnosis. And actually, you don't. You know, um, when you hypnotize children, they wriggle, they open their eyes, they scratch, they do all sorts of stuff, but it works brilliantly. It's not the depth of the trance that matters. Some people will go into a very deep state. They, um, they will be much more theta. Other people will be a lighter state. Um, I'm a, when I'm hypnotized, I'm a much lighter state, but it still has a brilliant effect. So it's not actually how deep the state is. Um, and I think that's a misconception. And if that's not explained to a client beforehand, what tends to happen is the client is lying there thinking this is not working. And that thought is what's causing the issue. Because there's a little part of the mind going, well, I can, you know, I just heard a fire engine go past. This clearly is not working. I don't feel in this deep, deep state. It can't be working. So I like to explain to my clients that, yeah, they, if your fire engine goes past, they will hear it. It's not a problem. You know, um, they will not feel like they've been knocked out. They'll just feel pleasantly relaxed. That's all. Like we're having a conversation, a relaxed conversation with their eyes closed. And when people know that up front, I think it kind of diffuses all those problems with the overactive mind kind of trying to analyze everything, which is often a reason for somebody being a little bit resistant. And well, thank you so much. And you were right, as you can see, there is a comment here. That's me, Analog uh, Analog sorry, analytical, right? So um, yeah, thank you so much for that. And uh, well, let's have a look. We will be slowly finishing. So if you have any questions, go ahead, type those in right now. It will be final call for the questions. And this is one of the, possibly uh, one of the last questions. So is it too much hypnosis, Pat? No. That said, I don't think a four hour hypnosis session would be a very good idea. But if you mean, can you have too many hypnosis sessions? No, because it's, it's taking you into um, a state that's actually very, very good for you. Because it, when you're in that state, the body can actually start repairing itself. Um, so it's actually physically very, very good for you. You can't have too much hypnosis. No, absolutely not. But you could have too long a hypnosis session, which is a different thing. So, yeah, if I was to take you into a session, we spent ages and ages and ages, you might come out and feel really exhausted and a bit woozy and just, you know, you could deal with too much in one session. For example, I would only ever deal with one issue in a session. So if somebody comes to me and they, they've got a weight issue and that's affecting their fertility, so they come to me for fertility, but they've got a weight issue, I'm not going to do weight and fertility in the same session because it would be too long a session, too much information, overwhelm for the mind. So I would probably say to them, I think, depending on their BMI, I would probably say, okay, well, let's look at your weight first, get you to a good BMI to give you all the chances and then we'll look at the fertility. But getting your weight down so that you're at a healthy weight is going to really increase your chance of fertility in itself. So yeah, if you try to deal with a whole load of issues in one go, that would not be good and it would overwhelm and confuse the mind. 
Amazing. Thank you so much for the clarification. Um, thank you for the question, Eve, as well. Definitely interesting one. And let's give it a second. Let's see if we have more questions. If not, we will be finishing. But of course, as always, remember, you are able to get in touch with Andrea. Uh, as you've seen, uh, she is available and she will be more than happy to help you out. And of course, you can look her look for her on her Instagram as well, as well, Pebble Fertility, right? And I'm sure it's uh, been useful for you because for me, definitely, it's something that uh, um, I think clarified because as I've mentioned, um, not many people do really know how it works still. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that we were able to discuss this. So thank you so much indeed. And before we finish, is there anything you would like to add? Well, I would basically like to wish everybody luck on their fertility journey and just say how important it is to remain positive, to really, really focus that it's going to happen for you. And I know sometimes it can be really, really hard um, and that you're trying to protect yourself maybe by thinking, mm, I'll hedge my bets. But you absolutely have to focus on what you want and not focus on the fears and the worries that I know everybody has. Perfect. Thank you so much. Definitely. Um, perfect summary for this. So thank you so much. And as you can see, um, there is a comment here. Thank you. Brilliant. I must give it a try. <laughs> we are glad that we were able to, um, I guess, inspire you. And if you haven't tried uh, hypnotherapy uh, maybe this is something for you so um, yeah definitely thank you so much indeed and I just want to mention as always it has been recorded you will be able to find this on our website my IVF answers as you know there are over 370 IVF webinars on our site already so plenty of topics as well uh, but also remember this will be available tomorrow on our YouTube channel and if you visit our YouTube channel you know that uh, there are so many topics you can have a look at. <laughs> and once again, Andrea, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for agreeing to participate in our project, IVF Webinars. It's a pleasure to have you. And I'm very, very excited that we were able to talk about this. And thank you for sharing also your own story. And well, um, I hope that we will be able to, to discuss it uh, in the near future as well. There are some more webinars coming up for sure. So hope to see you soon as well. Okay. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much indeed. Everyone have a lovely day or evening, wherever you are. I will uh, hope to see you. Of course, tomorrow we will be back. There is another topic we will discuss at 8 p.m. I hope you will be able to join us as well. Andrea, till, till our next event. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.